Saga of Tanya the Evil The movie is a direct continuation of the anime's first season. It is a military thriller that follows the story of Tanya de Gurachaf, a nine-year-old orphan girl with magical powers who rises through the military ranks of a nation known as the Empire. The movie is based on the light novel series of the same name by Carlo Zen and illustrated by Shinobu Shinotsuki. The movie picks up seconds after the anime series' rather abrupt cliffhanger ending. Following a rather cryptic opening, the film delivers the showdown between Tanya and Mary Sue, the daughter of a man who Tanya killed. That season one heavily implied was imminent. The film sees Tanya's goals change as a result of the battle. Realizing her home country's government is flawed and that World War I is inevitable, she begins influencing her country's leaders in hopes of preventing anything like what transpired in Earth's Germany during the 1900s. The movie feels like the missing piece to season one, as it neatly wraps up the final plot point of the season before hinting at the next big arc. The final battle is well animated and captures speed and tension. The juxtaposition of Tanya's young physical age and adult mental age creates some funny scenes. Mary Sue injects a new level of tension into the story, and the film's pacing is well done. The movie feels a bit bloated with secondary characters, and newcomers might be lost since there is no recap or explanation as to who Being X is. The opening sequence is cryptic and adds nothing to the overall plot. The movie is a direct continuation of the anime's first season, which is a rarity among anime films. It is a satisfying conclusion to the first decade of Tanya's life in this fantasy world she finds herself trapped in, while also setting the scene for her new role in the military. The film's themes of war, politics, and religion are thought-provoking and add depth to the story. The movie is a satisfying continuation of the anime's first season. It delivers a well-animated final battle, a satisfying conclusion to the first season's plot, and sets the scene for the next big arc. The film's themes of war, politics, and religion are thought-provoking and add depth to the story. However, the movie feels a bit bloated with secondary characters, and newcomers might be lost since there is no recap or explanation as to who Being X is. The opening sequence is cryptic and adds nothing to the overall plot. Overall, it is a great watch for fans of the series. The movie picks up seconds after the anime series' rather abrupt cliffhanger ending. Tanya's battalion returns to the Imperial capital from the southern front and is tasked with investigating troop movements on the border with the Russi Federation. Meanwhile, dark clouds are gathering in the east, as the communist-led Russi Federation is mustering troops on its western border, preparing to enter the war. Supported by a detachment of Allied volunteer magicians, the Federation is determined to spread the communist creed and bring the Empire to its knees. Any escalation of violence at this point may lead to new conflicts, plunging the world into a devastating global war. Following a rather cryptic opening, the film delivers the showdown between Tanya and Mary Sue, the daughter of a man who Tanya killed, that season one heavily implied was imminent. The final battle is well animated and captures speed and tension. Mary Sue injects a new level of tension into the story, and the film's pacing is well done. Tanya's goals change as a result of the battle. Realizing her home country's government is flawed and that World War I is inevitable, she begins influencing her country's leaders in hopes of preventing anything like what transpired in Earth's Germany during the 1900s. The movie feels like the missing piece to season one, as it neatly wraps up the final plot point of the season before hinting at the next big arc. The movie picks up seconds after the anime series' cliffhanger ending. The film delivers the showdown between Tanya and Mary Sue, and the final battle is well animated and captures speed and tension. Mary Sue injects a new level of tension into the story, and the film's pacing is well done. Realizing her home country's government is flawed and that World War I is inevitable, Tanya begins influencing her country's leaders in hopes of preventing anything like what transpired in Earth's Germany during the 1900s. The movie feels like the missing piece to season one, 
as it neatly wraps up the final plot point of the season before hinting at the next big arc. The movie takes place years after the war, where Adelheid von Schugel, now a priest, explains to a reporter that the Empire was at war because all the other nations feared its power. The 203rd Aerial Mage Battalion are on a sortie in Africa against Free Republic forces and destroy their headquarters. Tanya announces triumphantly that the 203rd would return to the Empire for R&R, &R, but upon their return, Rerugin orders them into an immediate reconnaissance mission on the Empire's eastern border with the Russi Federation. At the border, while the 203rd observe Federation forces stockpiling heavy artillery material, they receive a message advising that the Federation has declared war on the Empire. Tanya and the 203rd proceeds to destroy the entire enemy encampment. She proposes a direct attack on the Moscow, the capital city of the Federation, asserting that its AA defense is so poor that a Cessna could land in Red Square unmolested. HQ authorizes the attack, and the 203rd are unopposed in the air because the Federation has sent its mages to internment camps. Meanwhile, Warrant Officer Mary Sue has enlisted in the U.S. Army to avenge her father, Anton Sue. She arrives in Moscow with other multinational military volunteers of the 42nd Flying Division for recruit training under the commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel William Drake, but the 42nd suffers casualties as a result of Tanya's attack. The 203rd used the successful operation as an opportunity to record propaganda footage by singing the Imperial National Anthem over Moscow. Loria, a pedophiliac member of the Federation's cabinet, witnesses Tanya singing and becomes infatuated with her. Mary, however, becomes enraged and disobeys Drake's orders, taking off alone to engage the 203rd. The remaining members of the 42nd are also forced to engage in battle, where they suffer losses because of their inexperience. Mary engages Tanya in a fierce duel, but is defeated and is found later lying gravely wounded in a crater, begging God for the power to kill Tanya. The 203rd and other Imperial soldiers celebrate their successes at Imperial East Border Temporary Camp 21, drinking the night away. The 203rd receives a request to assist the 3rd and 22nd Divisions, who have been encircled at Tegenhof. Tanya agrees to help because taking control of Tegenhof would give the Empire control of the major railway hub leading into the Federation.